Hi everyone, in uh, today's video we continue with our series of videos on understanding the different types of research gaps that are present. So if you understand the different types of research gaps, you can look for these research gaps in other others work and then you can address these research gaps through your own research and showcase findings which are still not there in the area of study or in the real world. So let me start today uh, with a type of research gap which is called the evidence gap. Now what is evidence gap? Evidence gap is when a certain conclusion is reached based on research findings or data analysis but that conclusion is often contradictory or not supported when looked at from an abstract point of view or from another point of view. So let me give you an example that let's say a researcher conducted a study amongst engineering students where he or she found that the engineering students believe that a four year degree should be delivered in three years which will help to meet the requirements of the job market. So there was a, uh, there was a dearth of engineers in the job market and the engineering students uh, provided uh, their perception or provided their beliefs or point of view or their knowledge of the job market and the engineering field that a four year degree should be delivered in three years or maybe two years and which will help to meet the requirements of the job market or the dearth of engineers or the shortage of engineers. Now although this study could have been conducted with a large sample size and there is nothing wrong with the finding of the researcher, what you as a researcher may then look at as a research gap is that this study was conducted purely from the perspective of the engineering students who are enrolled in universities and trying to complete a four-year degree. However, if you look at the same problem from the perspectives of the employers or the perspective of the skill regulators, you may find that although a four-year degree can be completed in three years or two years to meet the shortage of engineers in the job market, it does not equip the skills or all the skills that the engineers require to be able to perform all the different kinds of jobs as required in the actual workplace. So from the employer's point of view or from the skills regulator point of view, you then conclude to find that uh, the four year degree should still be a four year degree, not a three year or two year because all the essential skills are not delivered. So this is an example of an evidence gap where uh, you find that the researcher has investigated a problem from a singular perspective. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes due to practicality, we can only investigate a problem from a single perspective. But you can highlight it as a researcher, uh, as a gap that you will then address by investigating the same problem from multiple perspectives. So evidence gap is often classified in the literature as two types of gaps is there. One is an absolute gap and the other is called the synthesis gap. So what is an absolute gap? Let me give you an example. So let's say an example is that a researcher has investigated and concluded that the implementation of anti-bullying policies in universities or in high schools have reduced the number of incidents related to bullying, harassment or violence in schools uh, or among university students. Now, although this finding may be quite robust, uh, the researcher has actually not carried out any kind of a, a randomized control design or any kind of experimentation to find out which of the specific policies were the most effective in reducing the number of bullying or harassment incidents. The researcher has looked at the policies as a whole but not gone into the depths of investigating which of the individual policies was most effective. Now because there is a huge gap there, there is an absolute gap there um, in knowledge, this can be called as an absolute gap. Now we also have the synthesis gap. What is synthesis gap? Now synthesis gap is when you find that a researcher has concluded certain findings but those findings were not based on a very systematic uh, analysis. So let's say that if there was a literature review carried out, it was not a very systematic or a scientific literature review. For example, the, lit the researcher might have only looked at a literature uh, between an 
2000 and 2020 uh, to investigate their problem and not being able to give a reason as to why they did not look at literature uh, before 2000 or after 2020. So this is not a scientific literature review unless the researcher has explained the reason of doing so or the researcher has not carried out a meta-analysis. So what is meta-analysis? Meta-analysis is when researchers look at the same problem um, and look at the results and uh, of, of the problem and they, 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 they try to find out who else has done uh, research investigation in this area and what were their findings and they kind of meta-analyze so they analyze the findings of different researchers who have investigated the same problem or similar problem and based on those analysis of those findings they come to a conclusion so if you find that then that means there is a synthesis gap that means that the previous researcher has not done that they have either not uh, performed a scientific uh, literature review or uh, synthesize the literature properly uh, maybe they missed certain essential literature or maybe the search criteria of literature had some gaps in it or if a meta-analysis was done they only looked at uh, a few literature only they did not look at a sufficient literature for them to be able to justify the finding so there are these different types of uh, uh, synthesis gaps which can be there so uh, if you find that there is a lack of scientific or structural or synthesis approach to finding a conclusion that can be then called a synthesis gap so uh, evidence gap there are multiple types of evidence gap but this is where your knowledge of the uh, the uh, scientific research process comes into play where you can look into the work of the other researchers and the idea is not to malign or insult or uh, attack the other researcher remember that uh, every research has certain limitations your research will have limitations as well so the idea is not to attack other researchers the idea is for you to be able to highlight uh, certain limitations of other research which you can then um, uh, address through your research so we always don't have to get into a scientific argument of course there are researchers who do have arguments who do attack each other but from a research point of view from a student point of view and from me as a super supervisor's point of view i always advise my students that you don't have to attack any research as long as you can highlight the limitations or the gaps um, that could be justified based on a scientific approach you can then uh, use it as an evidence gap and then address it in your own research so I hope these different examples helped you in understanding what is an evidence gap and how you can look for it. In my next video, I will discuss other types of research gap as well, which will enhance your knowledge of this topic. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, share, like, and happy to uh, read your comments and uh, look forward to it. Bye for now.